So all you guys that wanted the unboxing video, there it is. So when the iPhone 11 came out, I was blown away that you could take photos with the stars with a bloody mobile phone. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to take photos of the stars with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Bigger sensor, is it gonna make a difference? Let's find out. G'day guys, Shane Mostyn here. Each and every week I bring you two videos all about small sensor photography. That's mobile phones, GoPros, drones, all those sorts of things each and every week. If you head over to phonephotoschool.com.au, head to the bottom, subscribe to the newsletter there, and you'll get some free presets for Snapseed. There you do it, it's pretty cool. What we're doing today is learning how to take photos of the stars with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. What we're going to do is go through what you need to consider before you go out and take these photos, go and actually take these photos, and at the end here, we'll do a little bit of an edit and show you how to get this sort of photo out of this phone. All right, let's go into it. Now, the very first thing that we need to consider is planning for this sort of photo. This is unlike any other sort of photography you do with your mobile phone. Normally, it's just a click, point and click, and get a photo. This is not quite like that. If you want to capture stars, especially this galactic core, in the Milky Way, if you want to capture that with your phone, you need to know where it's going to be. And there's a few considerations that we need to keep in mind when planning this. Number one is the moon. You need to work out where the moon is going to be at that time of the year. So say for example, I want to go out tonight to take photos of the Milky Way, I need to know what phase of the moon is happening right now. When the moon is nice and bright, say anything above say a third to a quarter of the moon, it's probably going to be too bright to take that sort of a photo. You're going to be able to capture stars with the phone, but not as good as if it was pitch black. The second thing that you want to consider is light pollution. Now where I live here is in the middle of nowhere. We live in a small little town called Kahuna in North Central Victoria in Australia. It's a unique little town and it's only got two and a half thousand people here, I think. So the light pollution is virtually nothing. I'm able to capture these sorts of photos from this town. It's a really cool town, little small street. All the town is on one side of the little creek there. It runs pretty much through the middle of town. And uh, it's that old, it's even got payphones. But the best thing about where I live is that there's no light pollution. So I can get out of town, just drive five minutes down the road and I can capture photos like this. Stay up all night singing songs on the terrace. We didn't mind sitting out in the cold. The next thing you want to consider is the time of year if you want to capture that galactic core, that gaseous cloud. So there's an app that I use called PhotoPills, and I'll link to it at the top here. It's a very good app for planning this sort of photo. I'll link up the top to a video that I'll teach you all about how to use that app. It's probably the best app that you can get for astrophotography. It's the best planning app for photography in general that I've ever seen. So once you're happy with the situation, with the weather, with the moon, with the light, and you've got a location in mind, the next thing we need to consider is the equipment that we need to take with us. Some of these photos take up to 30 seconds long and you cannot physically hold the phone still for that amount of time. Now when you go into night mode on the iPhone, you have got two options, or well, really there's three. The first option is handheld and the maximum you can shoot is 10 seconds handheld. You can then put it onto a tripod and then you can shoot for up to 30 seconds. So you mount this in the phone holder on a tripod, and this is a little Joby tripod. There's a link in the description about this one. And if you haven't seen these before, you, you can mount them on anything really. You can put them hanging from clotheslines, put them on posts, wrap them around fences. Because they're bendy and they grip on things, put the phone into that, the camera senses that it's stationary, and it will give you 30 seconds that you can shoot for. And the third option there is a variation between the two. You can manually slide the slide, and we'll get onto that tonight when we get out there and take some photos, you can slide that, that counter and you can shoot for say 20 seconds if you wanted to. So that's the equipment you need. The next thing you might wanna think about is a light. If you've got a subject that you wanna photograph, like this truck, for example, you need to have some sort of light to light it with. And to be honest, any sort of light will do. I've done lots of videos on this, and I'll link one at the top here, how to use that light to focus that subject in the foreground, but uh, what you're really here for is how to take photos of the stars with this bad boy. So let's go and do that. Terrace, we didn't mind 
sitting out in the cold. It was impossible to make us embarrassed. We were free. Well, obviously, we're in the dark now. We're not at night. This is more in the morning, pre-dawn hours. So if you think back to what I was talking about with photo pills and the time of year that we're shooting this Milky Way, this galactic core, at the beginning of the season, for us here in Australia, it's April through to roughly uh, first week in November. It starts out there on the western horizon, almost vertical, and then through the year at the same time of the night, it'll come over to the western side of the horizon and it'll be horizontal. Now though, at that time of night, at the beginning of the night, it's like below the horizon. So right now, it's actually out there in the south and it'll be the tail of that galactic core, that orange gaseous cloud. That's actually below the horizon now. So what we're going to see at the moment, and this is roughly four o'clock in the morning, thank me later, the galactic core is below the horizon, the tail of it will be sitting up the top here. So what I've got set up here now is the phone, it's on the tripod holder, I'm not using the, the Joby tripod at the moment. I'm using, this is a Manfrotto tripod. I'll link it down the bottom. I'll use this one here mainly for all of these sort of tutorials and reviews. So we've got the same phone holder. It's on a ball head and uh, we'll line up the shot and I'll show you how to take it. So when we're setting this up, what we're going to do is go into the camera and because it's dark enough here, you'll see that little yellow dot that's there, little yellow icon at the top there. You touch that, it'll give you the amount of time that you can shoot. That's the night mode. The little line down the bottom here on the side, that there you can say that you can adjust that higher or lower in the shutter speed. It'll give you the lowest, I think about five seconds. We'll go here, five seconds, that's right. And um, when we go to the top, it's a maximum of 30 seconds because we're on a tripod. Can't stress that enough. If it's not on a tripod, you're not going to get the full 30 seconds. I like to touch on a star and lock it on that star and once it's locked, that's where the focus is set. You can use that exposure adjustment, that little slider next to that box when you touch it to make it brighter or make it uh, uh, darker. And that is pretty much all I do. All right, we're lined up now and we're going to take a photo. So we'll touch out the side there, touch on a star, lock that onto the star, hit the night mode and go the full 30 seconds and let the photo be taken. It is amazing so far what I've seen with this, and I'll show you in a second. I actually recorded a little bit of video um, with this phone, and that's pretty amazing. It's nearly done. A couple of seconds to go. All right, that's taken now. Let's have a look at the photo. <laughs> that looks pretty bloody good. Um, the stars are nice and sharp in that photo. It looks a little bit warm. I think that looks pretty good. It's definitely better than the 11. It's better than the 12 Pro. Is it 40%, 47% better than the 12 Pro? I don't know, it's good. I think it's worth doing. Um, it looks pretty, we'll have a look at this in the edit, but it looks nice and bright through the middle there. Probably more, well, brighter than what I think it should be, but. We'll have a look at that in a minute with the edit, but um, I think that, that looks pretty good. That's pretty impressive out of a phone. We'll do comparisons with other phones in another video, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. And uh, let's go and have a look at this photo in Lightroom on mobile, and I'll show you how I'll edit this photo. Let's get into that. So what we'll do, we'll put this photo into Lightroom on the iPad. I'll use the iPad so that you can see what I'm doing better. The tools are exactly the same on the iPad as what they are to the iPhone. But first, I saw this photo this morning, on the photo this morning when, when I took that. Um, there's a way here that I find south all the time, so I don't take a compass or anything with me um, to see what's going on. I can, you can use photo pills for it, but I will generally look for the stars, and if you're not in the Southern Hemisphere, I don't know if you guys actually see the Southern Cross, I'm, I'm guessing that you don't. Um, so you can see this line here, that's the Southern Cross right there, and it's got the little other star off the side there. And you see that Southern Cross on the Australian flag. But what you can do down here, you've got these other two stars and these two stars are called the two pointers. And if you draw, draw a line between these two pointers and then perpendicular out like that, and then the top and the bottom star of the Southern Cross like this, 
where this intersects right there, if we drop that down straight to the horizon, that there is south. Kind of cool, huh? So anyway, that's your astral navigation out of the way. <laughs> Let's put this into Lightroom now. We've got it in Lightroom, and you can see here more so that it's really bright in the in the center of that photo. And I'm not sure why that is. I've got a feel. I didn't see it on the 12. I definitely didn't see it on the 11. I'm seeing it on the 12 Pro Max. And I took another photo. I'll show you here, and it did the same thing. So that's interesting observation. It's a um, maybe the way it's processing this internally in the phone is just a little bit different. But anyway, we'll deal with this editing now. That light that's on the horizon is actually a neighbor's farm and he starts milking over there at like 4.30 in the morning. So I was halfway through doing that tutorial when this light turned on. So there you go, that's how early I was out. First of all, I look at this photo and I go, the horizon isn't flat. And that for me is not that uncommon with astrophotography because, well, it's dark and you don't necessarily see the horizon with the Mark I eyeball. So we'll, we'll fix that first with the, the cropping tool. We'll bring that so it's nice and flat. And I'm happy with, enough with that. We'll go into the light. We're going to, you can see here. So what I do sometimes is to see how good the photo is overall, I'll hit the auto button and the auto button will make it all nice and bright and you can zoom in then and you can really see those artifacts that I was talking about um, on the 11, the 12 Pro, and it's there on the 12 Pro Max as well. So I'll just uh, undo that auto and we'll go through and do this manually. This is a quick edit. If you want a more in-depth edit, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll do one of these in the next couple of videos as well. So I'm going to increase the contrast first and bring up the highlights and bring the shadows down slightly. If we were lighting a subject in the foreground in this photo, I would probably increase the shadows, but we're not doing this in this occasion. We'll increase the blacks a little bit. Let's go down to the color, increase the temperature. It's already a reasonably warm photo, and I think that's because of this light that's on the horizon there. Um, I'm going to increase the temperature oh so slightly, and I'm going to increase the tint as well. I don't mind a bit of magenta in these edits. I think that works pretty well. Um, let's go down to the effects. And I'm going to dehaze this a bit because that through the center there, I think looks a little bit too hazy. So I'm going to dehaze that and actually that looks pretty good. I don't mind that at all. We'll bring the clarity up a little bit. That'll do for him. And we'll go down a bit further now for the detail and we'll see if we can do something about this noise. Well, it's not noise, it's like an artifact. I think it's something that's just inherent with the iPhones, but we'll reduce, we'll increase that noise and we'll see if we can get rid of it. It gets rid of most of it, but now that just looks like a cloud, that the, uh, the galactic core, the, the tail of that galactic core through this area here. Um, so I think that's way too much. I generally don't go over 30 to 40 anyway with my noise reduction. Um, we'll go to the sharpening a little bit and bring the masking of that sharpening up. Just so it's sharpening up the stars. There's not too much else I really want to do with that, to be honest. Um, that's gonna work pretty well. I'll show you what it will look like though, if we make it a cooler. See, at the moment, we're almost into summer here. So that kind of makes sense to me to have it a bit warmer. If we're in the middle of winter, I would make those colder. I don't know why, I just do and it tends to work. Um, but I'll leave it a little bit higher as it was. Maybe around five, eight. Yeah, that's pretty good like that. So as far as I'm concerned, that edit is done. I might actually, no, I won't even, if the galactic core was there, that gaseous cloud, I would certainly put a radial tool over that and increase the clarity of that. We can, um, we can put a brush over that um, so we can put a brush over that and we'll go uh, and we'll, we'll paint with that plus symbol and we'll paint that core a bit. We will increase the contrast in that, bring the shadows down, go down to the effects tab and bring the clarity up in that. And that's all I would do. There's, in fact, I, I probably wouldn't have even done that. So what I'll do with this photo, I will 
onto the website, the phonephotoschool.com.au. There will be a uh, review on the, or tutorial I should say, in the tutorials about how to take Astro photos with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. This photo, the edited photo, and the original photo will be in there for you to download and have a play with yourself. Um, all right, guys, I'll, I'll see you on Friday. Catch you later. When we were 17.